Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. So we're going to have a look at when it's week 10 days. In today's second video, it'll take us into the start of September. Uh, we'll also have a look at Bayesian climate change. It's 40 days as well. And that's going to take us pretty much through the whole of uh, September. Now, bringing on with that, just say that uh, the 5 day forecast was released earlier today. So you can find the videos out here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit. It's above the polling count. There's also the written version. And you get to that from the buttons at the top of the page. Not going to be too bad in the five days ahead. We had loads of chopping and changing for the bank holiday weekend during the, uh, the uh, bank holiday updates that we've been doing over the past uh, couple of weeks. But in the end, it's turning out that uh, it's not going to be too bad at all, I don't think. Especially down in the south, should be a lot of dry and warm weather coming up. So after all the flip-flopping, and at times it looked like we were going to have a very wet bank holiday, at times it looked like we going to have a very cool bank holiday. Actually, there's not going to be a huge amount going on. There's just going to be loads of dry and uh, fine weather down in the south. It will be a little bit more unsettled up in the north, because it's not a bank holiday uh, up across Scotland. So I'll let you have a look at five-day forecast and see what you think about that. Before we get on with week to day for let's just say about the uh, thunderstorm so i explained this in the five day forecast but i better go over it again uh a bit caught out last night with the storms across northern Ireland and scotland and northern england so there's some really severe thunderstorms around last night especially for northern Ireland, but also for parts of scotland and northern england as well torrential rain severe lightning uh, I wouldn't expect it to be that bad. If I'd known it was going to be that bad, I would have done Stormwatch uh, yesterday. Some heavy showers were expected in the northwest, but not to the extent that they were. Um, it really did turn very severe, actually, across some parts of the British Isles uh, last night and first thing this morning. So sorry about that. It just to show that uh, we do still get caught out by the weather, particularly by thunderstorms in the winter, of course. Same thing happens with snow as well. Uh, we forecast, we forecast these um, events. We don't t come up, come up too much. Sometimes we don't think they're going to do much and they give us a surprise. And that's one of those situations that happened last night. So sorry about that to anyone that was caught out. Uh, we've still got some thunderstorms actually uh, in the North Sea now. So we can see this very vibrant colour, uh, massive colour just here off the East Coast uh, on the radar picture from the weather outlook. Some very severe thunderstorms going on there. There's the lightning detector showing uh, all of the lightning that's flashing away in the North Sea at the moment. As you see, most of this is now clearing out into the North Sea. So it is drying up on this east side of the country. If you plan to take a boat out into the North Sea this afternoon, watch out, because there's going to be some very severe thunderstorms uh, in the North Sea this afternoon. Now you see behind that, it's much quieter across the country. There are showers across Ireland, but uh, they aren't doing much. There will be a few showers in the West this afternoon, but we've lost the humid air mass that, we've, well, that was brought to us by ex hurricane Gert, that's gone, and with it, those thunderstorms, thundery showers have gone as well. So, we'll have a look at some ensembles data uh, first for today's video, and we're we'll looking at Portsmouth today. So, the red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average at Portsmouth, and you can see that at the moment we're still a little bit warmer than average, we're going back to average in the next 24 hours as this fresh Atlantic air comes in. Actually, for the rest of the week and into weekend, dates on the bottom, of course, rest of the week and into bank holiday weekend, we're going to stay warmer than average. Uh, down at Portsmouth. So it's going to be a fairly warm weekend coming up for the south particularly. But as we get through into next week, we've got a bit of a cooling trend appearing uh, just then. And as we're going to start of September, which is this period just here, it looks like overall we're just really close to average uh, with those upper air temperatures. For precipitation, so uh, we've got lots of dry weather coming up between now and uh, the bank holiday weekend. So not going to be too much rain at all. Really decent spell of weather coming up for the south. But as we get through to next week, the rainfall spikes are coming back. Now, how seriously can we take that? Because uh, a few days ago, it looked like this bank holiday weekend was going to be quite unsettled with a fair amount of rain. That's been pushed back now to the very end of August and the start of September. So I think there does have to be a little bit of a question mark about those precipitation spikes. Might be that the first week of September is going to be wetter. But um, just a little bit of a question mark, I think, purely based on what's happened with this bank holiday 
uh, weekend. In terms of the surface temperatures at uh, Portsmouth, so that's where we're starting off right now, around 20 degrees Celsius. Into the uh, end of the week and the weekend, actually there's a bit of a warming trend. So we're going very close to 25 degrees. That's 25 just there. Very close to 25 degrees over the weekend and into the start of next week down on the south coast. Later next week, we've got another cooling trend taking place, dipping underneath 20 degrees Celsius. And then that's where the GFS ensembles want to keep things really through the first week of September, uh, under, at or under 20 degrees Celsius. 20 degrees Celsius, probably about average uh, by the time you get through to the uh, first part of September um, down on the south coast. Maybe even a little bit warmer than average, uh, you might say. Now, for uh, pressure, this is air pressure, so we're starting off relatively low with the pressure right now. We're going to be going back to 1,020 millibars over the uh, remainder of the week and into the bank holiday weekend. Bit of a cooling, a uh, bit of a lowering trend with the pressure uh, just there. And then after that, through the first week of September, quite a lot of scatter. So there are several members of the GFS ensembles that have quite low pressure for this first week of September. Several members are actually going quite high with the pressure. Some of them going up to 1,030 millibars. So I still think there's a question mark over this early part of September, the first week of September, still a little bit up for grabs uh, at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Temperature anomalies for the week ahead go from the 23rd through to 31st of August, coming out a little bit warmer than average for England and Wales. Perhaps a little bit cooler than average for Northern Ireland and Scotland. But I think overall we are um, a little bit warmer than average in the week ahead. Many parts of Europe actually looking very warm in the uh, coming week. Precipitation anomaly is still showing a bit of an north south split. So southern parts of the country from the 23rd to 31st of August coming out significantly drier than average. Still a little bit wetter than average for Scotland and Northern Ireland, particularly so in the northwest. In America, the east-west split has returned. This has been ongoing through the summer. It did relent a little bit a couple of weeks ago, but it's back now. Uh, we've got uh, very significantly hotter than average temperature anomalies in the western parts of the states, whereas in the eastern parts of the states, um, um, through central areas with a bre breadbasket, uh, it's significantly cooler than average there. I say that's been a pattern that has been ongoing through the summer, it did relent a little bit about a week or two back, but now it's returned to that east-west split with those um, temperature anomalies. Precipitation anomalies, many parts of the states actually coming out drier than average in the week ahead from the 23rd to the 31st of uh, August. Southern and southeastern parts of America, interestingly, a little bit wetter than average there. That might be from um, sort of tropical elements coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. Right, better pull this back. This is the GFS for Sunday coming back to home. And we find that we've got a little bit of a ridge down in the south. Low pressure is out to the north and west. Moving through to back on in Monday, it's turning wet and windy in the northwest. But the south, southeast still hanging on to that ridge. I think it could be a really good weekend, um, despite all of the updates that look really dodgy. I think actually it's, it's going to be a really decent weekend down in the south. So the south coast could well be the coast to go to uh, this bank holiday weekend if you want to have a little mini break. Into the working part of next week. This takes us to Tuesday the 29th of August. Looks like pressure is lowering to the south end, so probably bringing some sort of cold front southwards, maybe a band of rain heading south. That might be quite heavy. Uh, into Wednesday, the 30th of August, that low pressure is getting out of the way, but it has perhaps deposited some quite wet, wet, some quite wet weather down in the south and southeast, with cooler air and showery conditions following from the north and the west. We go to the end of August, this is the last day of the month, and uh, it looks like we're going into more unsettled pattern then, although for Friday the 1st of September, again, we tried to build this little bit of a ridge down to the south, but the next day of low pressure is in the Atlantic. That starts to move in from the Atlantic through the first weekend of September. Um, but ahead of it, we are putting up quite a warm southerly wind here on uh, Saturday, the 2nd of September. That's day 10. Just beyond day 10 to Sunday the 3rd, it's turning cooler with the air coming back in from the west. But maybe some sort of a thundering to do there during that week, first weekend of uh, September. 
Uh, he said we have to look like this. So, again, I don't think weekend is shaping up too bad for the South. It does look more unsettled for the North, but the South, we're trying to hang on to a little bit of a ridge right way through to Bank Holiday Monday into Tuesday 29th. Again, here comes the cold front, probably bringing a band of quite heavy rain south and east, and then cooler air following it from the north and west. By Wednesday the 30th, we're all into that cooler, showery, Northwesterly air mass, and then a little bit at odds with what GFS is doing. The ECM actually turns wind into the north as we get through to um, the end of March. This is Thursday, the 31st of August. The winds are going normally, that's bringing down some quite cool air, maybe a little bit cold uh, from the north. Toppling in this ridge, but winds staying in from the north of the northwest up to day 10. This takes us to day 10 which is Saturday the 2nd of September. And the ridge is trying to build in from the Azores high. So it's relatively settled, but it is within a cool air mass. Uh, there's the upper air temperatures, as you can see. It is quite a cool start to September. So that's a little bit odd, at odds with what the GFS is doing, because the GFS actually wants to bring up a bit of a southerly during that first weekend of September, and possibly hints at something a little bit thundery happening. Um, certainly no thunder with the ECM scenario. It's too cool for that. We've got a lot of high pressure ridging in from off the Atlantic. So as ever, very uncertain times really as we're moving up towards the start of September. I explained this in the videos recently. Uh, it's always uncertain at this time because of sort of tropical elements in the tropical part of the Atlantic. It's a period where the tropics are becoming active and where those tropical storms go, how they interact with the jet stream and other factors always means that uh, sort of second half of August, much of September, is basically the hardest um, period of the year to forecast, certainly in terms of an extended range. Um, so we just got to wait and see really what's going to happen through this first week of September. I think there's quite a bit of uncertainty about it. Let's have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. Now, bear in mind, these longer range models are also impacted by the uncertainty that's happening within the tropical Atlantic. So, again, at the best of times, long range forecasting is uncertain. And at best of times, you don't need to take it with a pinch of salt. But it's even more the case at this time of year. But I'll just show you what Beijing Climate Centre is showing today for the next 40 days. So this is uh, 500 mm height anomaly from the 21st through to the 30th of August. And it's building the heights out to the west, to the southwest of the coach. So the wind's coming in, something like that, the jet stream. Um, fair amount of dry weather, but not particularly exciting temperatures. And there would be some unsettled conditions at times. That really continues through the first 10 days of September. So this takes us from the 31st of August to the 9th of September, when again we have that area of above average heights out to our west. We're doing something like that for jet stream. So again, a lot of dry weather with that. Um, some showery rain at times, particularly for the north, but overall quite dry. Not particularly exciting temperatures because the wind is coming in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Now, the next 10 day period shows quite a dramatic change. This takes us from the 10th through to the 19th of September, and a large area of below average heights then are setting up over the UK and over Scandinavia, too, with above average heights up towards Greenland. We'd be turning the wind into the northwest with that. So that's much more unsettled. There'd be quite a lot of rain coming through with that, and it's a lot cooler as well. So that's autumn setting in on the 10th to the 19th of September. Keep that in your diary and just see whether autumn does indeed set in through that middle 10, 10 days uh, of uh, September. And then we go through to the final 10 days of the month, which takes us from the 20th to 29th of September. Still, that's quite unsettled, really. Below average heights over UK, and to the east as well. So that's still cool, still unsettled, probably bringing the wind in from a north or northwesterly type direction. So temperature anomalies uh, with Beige Climate Centre, it's for days like this, uh, days 1 through to 10, 21st through to 30th of August. Perhaps a little bit surprisingly, coming out a bit cooler than average. You'd have thought that might be slightly warmer than average. So... That's perhaps a little bit um, over the top with the cool signal there for the first 10 days uh, that we're looking at. Then we go through to the next 10-day period, which is taking us from the 31st of August to the 9th of September. That one a little bit, uh, a little bit 
closer to average, maybe a little bit above average. That's probably, probably more like what you expect, really, for the next 10 days. The uh, next 10-day period, this is the period where it looks like autumn is setting in, is the 10th to the 19th of September. That's coming out cooler than average. It makes sense based on the height anomaly, which looks very unsettled and cool. And then this continues into the final 10 days of September, uh, so we've got the 20th, 29th of September, when again, coming out cooler than average. If this is right, it's always a big if with any long range output, and it's doubly so at this time of year. But if it's right, we're looking at a relatively cool September, which uh, is at odds with what happened last year, because last year had a very, very warm, even hot uh, September. So it'd be interesting to see how that pans out. As always, long range forecasting is not to be relied upon. And we'll just see how things go. Coming back to the more reliable time frame, which is next week to 10 days. A uh, lot of dry weather coming up for the South. I think it's going to be a decent bank holiday weekend in the South as long as we don't get a last minute upset coming along. But it should be a decent weekend for the South. And then next week, probably turning a little bit more unsettled and cooler for the very end of August and the opening days of September. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.